Hello everybody, thanks very much for joining me. I hope you've had a good week and welcome to today's Feel Good Friday vlog. I've inspired myself by my own success upstairs laying the white vinyl in the bathroom and in the small bedroom which is now my office and um, I am about to attempt to finally finish the flooring downstairs in the front parlour voila, and the room next door which is what I call the jungle room and that's the room that Begonia and I sit most of the time staring at the French doors. She does a lot more staring than I do. I tend to stare at her staring at the French doors but that's where we sit. If you're new here welcome thanks very much for joining me but uh, very briefly I bought this house about six years ago complete renovation project and like everything I do I sort of got bored 75% of the way in and then I just started decorating and buying and adding knickknacks hadn't finished the floor so well I mean you can imagine what that means can't you <laughs> it's all gotta come out it's gotta come up and out and who's gonna do it I is. I don't mind. I did it to myself. I put it all in. <laughs> but I'm not going to take 100% of the blame because I've said it a hundred times. I absolutely went to the edge of the universe, edge of the galaxy, looking for a half decent tradesperson. Let's just be real tradesmen because it's all men uh, to try and do the job that needed doing to fix the floor fix the joints just do the stuff that i just simply couldn't do on my own because i didn't have the skills or the physical strength needed a team of builders to do it it wasn't a complicated job it was just a bit of a shitty job could i find a single person a single person to do it no i went through everything i went through um all the respectable avenues tried to get recommendations ended up in the last chance saloon on those you know those websites where companies supposedly check the quality of tradesmen for you and uh, they offer some sort of reassurance that they've all kind of qualified and uh, they're not murdering psychopaths well what can i say what an absolute horror shocker but you have no choice if you're a woman and you're trying to get a job done you are literally completely shanghaied you're beholden to these companies and uh, I mean I tried to call them and uh, request information so I could make a formal complaint and uh, I just sort of casually inquired how they go about vetting you know what their vetting process is and uh, to put a negative review on with regards to an absolutely horrendous cowboy job that I paid a fortune for and they said oh don't be ridiculous we never put negative reviews because you just get jealous girlfriends all the time and I just thought all right okay it's just that that's it, that's it in it that's the whole thing, that's the whole scene. You're just a jealous girlfriend. <laughs> Absolute criminals. Total charlatans. So, not defeated. There is always a solution. I went on the internet in the night and uh, I mentioned a few times to some friends what I was sort of thinking of doing and every single response was oh no oh no horrible and it's a sort of a gut reaction to the word there's two words <laughs> and everyone's response mine as well it took me it took me a long time to sort of get to this point and obviously a lot of criminals <laughs> two words just sort of send horror through people's bones I'll tell you what those two words are carpet tiles <laughs> uh, 
I know, I know, I know what you're thinking. I know exactly how you're feeling. <laughs> Just a minute. Hang on. Bear with me. Go with me. Stay with me. <laughs> I predict capitals are the future. I know that they're the past. I know it was the 70s thing and then it was like cheap office, office thing. But capitals are back. Capitals are designer. And they are quality. And they are bloody expensive. <laughs> so I'd been around most of the uh, DIY shops and sort of home furnishing shops. And they were all those sort of, you know, grey, square, 50 centimetres by 50 centimetres. You've got grey, black, brown. What was the other colour? Oh, like a blue, like an office blue. And... Uh, Oh, they were quite uninspiring. And it's that square shape, you know, that sort of cheap car hire, office reception area, carpet tile shape. Nah, that's not what I want. So I started investigating and I found several companies um, that supply the most incredible colours and styles and designs. And I had to make a decision. What colour did I want my floors to be? And um, I wanted orange. You'll be hard pushed to find a better orange carpet towel than the ones I've got. <laughs> I was on the internet for hours in absolute ecstasy searching orange carpets, orange floors. I was on Pinterest, hardly anything. But I do have this knack of predicting future trends. I used to do it for a living. And uh, I'm telling you, every time I put something on my Facebook page, it's on some television program a few weeks later. <laughs> I know who you are. Just saying. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I went about it. And uh, it turns out that there was a company that wasn't too far away that... Um, had a whole stockpile so i'd found some really really beautiful ones very expensive and they were like a really bright tangy orange sort of an orange that's in the middle of there like a very very bright satsumery um saffron type color mustardy but but bright 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 and uh, oh my god they cost an absolute fortune I thought, oh God, do I want to pay this much money um, in this environment where I might have to sell the house at any point? And I thought, I'll just have, a, I'll just have another little mooch around Tintinet in the dark. And uh, I found the absolute perfect alternative. And uh, there was a photograph of them, but it was a stock photograph. So what I called him, I called the company, they were so friendly and so nice. Uh, and I said... I know you're using a stock photograph, but can I just ask you, is the colour tangerine with like an oatmeal fleck? <laughs> and he said, oh my God, that's exactly what colour they are. I thought I knew, I knew, I knew, I knew, I knew. Okay, I'll take them, I'll have them. And uh, they turned out, if you went to collect them, that there was a considerable discount to his uh, website price. Fabulous, perfect scenario, because... It was still quite a lot of money to invest in something that you hadn't seen yourself. Um, and obviously, it's a major job once you have them to fit them. So I didn't really want to buy 30 square meters of carpet tiled in orange that I hadn't seen or touched. And uh, this was just the perfect setup. So uh, off I went. I did all my measuring with my wonky dressmaker's uh, measuring tape. Climbing over all my knickknacks and all the furniture. So much furniture and so many knickknacks. <laughs> Honestly, oh my god. I know I know there'll be some sort of crisis. Um, but hopefully the crisis that I had collecting them will be the crisis. And uh, everything from now on will go quite smoothly. So, yeah, off I went. Just before I share that part of the story, I'll just give you a look at 
what the two rooms look like now and uh, obviously the hardest bit I hope is going to be taking everything out but you know me what I'll probably do is leave everything in just move it about a bit <laughs> so Inspired by my success upstairs uh, uh, from laying vinyl flooring with the furniture still in the room, I'm going to do the same downstairs and I'm going to lay two huge rooms and one hall uh, with orange carpet planks with the furniture still in place. <laughs> You can thank me later. <laughs> Have a look at this. Right then, today is the day. I've been putting it off for six years. I've had psychopaths, criminals, thugs and morons in this house and I've paid them a fortune to make anything that I wanted repairing worse. So, it's taken six years to come to this conclusion. It is the day to finally live like a normal person not like this it's absolutely freezing the drafts coming through this floor are demonic i don't know if you can hear the wind in the chimney that's next <laughs> that's gonna get stuffed this was an emergency purchase i did it on the fly in ikea just to have something down on the floor floorboards are in absolute state can't be repaired they're covered in concrete can't get it off um had some professional people come in and give me a call for sanding total lunatics um it's all patched can't cope can't sit here staring at it also completely hindered by this constant need to only decorate your house as if you're decorating for resale in this country because we've got to the point where you literally can't sit down in your own house just in case you ruffle something and uh, take a few quid off the asking price or whatever, even if you're not selling. Well, my dreams of making it to Mexico aren't going to happen anytime soon, so next best thing, I'm bringing Mexico to me via Burnley. <laughs> right, I am moving closer and closer to the front door and, and leaving. <laughs> but, um, if I want to bring Mexico to me, I've got to drive about an hour and a half, um, maybe two hours to a little town called Burnley in the northwest of England. It's in Lancashire. Um, I've never been to Burnley before and most of my life I've lived in a tra well, I haven't lived in a van. Well, sometimes I have. <laughs> most of the times I've driven a transit van and... <laughs> And uh, I would uh, think of nothing of driving for like five, six, seven hours in my transit van just to go and do something. But now I've reached the age where the thought of driving up the motorway, even for an hour or two, is kind of harrowing. <sighs> but I've got some fortitudification in there. A little bit of Salvadine Max, thank you very much. Uh, but I've got to drive in that bit of trash. Oh, God. I've measured everything about five times. It'll still be wrong, but here we go. Operation The Floor Is Lava commence. Right, I'm finally ready. I'm off. I'm in the car. Let's go. Let's prepare to launch. Okay, it's half past eleven in the morning. I've gone full old lady. I, I would have had a flask, but I haven't got a flask. But I've got a little pot of water got some more painkillers, I've got two jackets, I've got a blanket and uh, a notepad and a pen. I've got my charging lead and uh, I've got directions on the sat nav. Let's go. Oh yeah, comfy shoes and comfy jumper. Start the engine. Go. Come on then, go. Oh god. Right, it's the next day, I'm back. I survived. But only just. 24 hours and four boosters later, I'm stabilising. <laughs> Honestly, I'm too sensitive for this life now. 
There was a time where I was invincible, fearless, like an Amazon Onion, an Amazonian. Well, a five foot Amazonian. A little wee Amazonian. <laughs> oh, but honestly, no fear whatsoever. Now, at this time of my life, my biggest fear, but more frightened of this than marauding maniacs, builders, pandemics, psychopathic governments. Do you know what it is? Battery life. <laughs> My phone died on the way and I felt like going with it into the battery phone life afterlife. Oh God. I'm just stood here standing staring at my beloved baby daughter Bogonia Coconut and just holding onto the radiator, thanking thanking the cat god that I'm alive. Honestly, well, no, I mean I wasn't gonna die. I was an hour and a half away from home, but um I could still be wandering around the north of England at this moment, just wandering around the moors. By the time I got there, I was just kind of rattled from the journey because it's a long time since I've been on a on a UK motorway and they are grim. It's just like trucks, spray, just noise. Oh, it's horrible. It's the most unpleasant experience. And I'm in that tiny little shackily car. Um, and so by the time I got there, I was just like so relieved. And then I looked at my phone and there was 13% left, not charging. Phone completely knackered. Um, and that just set me off on a <laughs> crisis, on crisis stamina mode. <laughs> oh God, thankfully had enough juice to get me to the place. <clears throat> Back street industrial estate, tiny little open door in the middle of absolutely nowhere. It was like walking into Happy Valley, I thought. No, <laughs> this is not for me. <laughs> Where's Sarah Lancashire when you need her? I need backup. Backup. Anyway, I backed up. I backed the fear into the um the factory door and um the geezer who was really oh they were so lovely, a really old couple, and the geezer just sort of said, Right, I've got to go now and off he went. He said, My wife's gonna look after you. Well she was smaller than me and about twice as old. So he just kind of abandoned us in his factory lockup unit with these car carpet tiles to pick up. Um anyway, they're in the car. They were lovely. Um we shared the experience of being old and having absolutely no storage left in our brains and the fear of you know, the permanent fear of having dementia or Alzheimer's and have we got it or is it just normal life? Um, look at Bacconi's face. She's thinking, oh, just be a cat. Um, so, yeah, absolutely beside myself thinking, my brain has gone. I can't get home. I'm trapped in Happy Valley in an industrial estate in a fear. What am I going to do? <laughs> anyway, desperately tried to write down directions, but just just sort of had to I just had to wing it like the old days. They were honestly there were times when I would just get in the van and floor it, just go somewhere and end up where I wanted to be. How was that possible? Didn't even use a map. Just got there. Absolutely burning around London, north, south, east, west. Be there in twenty minutes was there in 15. Oh, seriously, I don't know how it happened. Now, completely, totally dependent on my phone. Um, and it's, it's broke. It is broke. Broken. Broken. So I spent the whole night on the sofa just kind of like trying to resuscitate myself, just like in a complete like breakdown. <laughs> technologically induced breakdown <laughs> on the sofa. Oh, shaking. Look at her though. Look how beautiful she is. Hi darling. You know what she's doing? She's waiting for her boyfriend. Woohoo! <laughs> a boyfriend.
She's come to help now. <laughs> Unbelievable. You can all just sit there for six months while I just put off this job. <laughs> you might be ready for next winter. She's not happy. She absolutely hates that. She knows that there is upheaval any minute now. And uh, we went to the vets. On Wednesday for her booster, she's absolutely fine, super, super, super fit, and uh, she's the same weight as she was last year. So I'm thrilled about that because that was slowly sort of escalating. But she is stabilized in the old pouch area. <laughs> I love you. I love you too. So look at all this. Look at all this stuff. Obviously, loads of stuff behind the sofa, lots of vintage prints and artwork absolutely rammed underneath the sofa all the vintage magazines the cats the ceramics the glass the trolley and lamps rammed massive cheese plant knickknacks on the mantelpiece everything is smoke and mirrors though because nothing is fixed everything is transient so it can be lifted and shifted um, the, problem, the biggest problem we're going to have in here is that down there, they inserted the gas meter midway through the floor. So there's literally a gaping chasm that just goes to the outside ground, underground, a hole, a massive hole. And the gas meter is fixed in the middle of that, just sits in the middle of that. So I'm going to have to somehow navigate my way around that and build in some sort of cabinet cupboard where I can open the door to read the meter and then close it again and seal it. Uh, well, you can imagine the draft. Horrible. And uh, all of this over here. Just all of this. So I'll start, I think, in the front parlour. I call it the front parlour. You know, the front reception room is uh, the 21st century description, I believe. <laughs> But we don't live in the 21st century. And then uh, I'll move on to the jungle room. Because there is a lot of uh, gaps to fill in this room. And there's a bit of an issue with a drop to floor. Uh, so I'm going to practice on the room that I feel is the easiest. So, yeah. All of this temporary. Grab those rugs in Ikea on a midnight flit and uh, they served their purpose very well. Oh! She's up! Hello love! Hi darling! Oh, we have a scratch. Hi! Hi! Hello love! Oh. Good girl! You're going to look so beautiful on tangerine carpet tiles. You are. Might be able to see you easier as well. <laughs> so, I'm excited. Let's crack on. Well, I changed direction once and um, a little bit of a trial and error with the cutting around the corner and the sizing, but they are a dream to work with. Honestly, you can feel its quality. It's just lovely to work with. I'm excited. I'm happy. I haven't glued them down yet, but I think I'm just going to uh, chance it the way the guy said when I bought them. He said if you just have them, you know, wedged up against the side, against the skirting, they should stay. I might stick them down in the middle of the room. Uh, but you know that constant maybe i have to move transient feeling that thought that's omnipresent i love them so much i might want to take them with me <laughs> so i'm not going to stick them down if they start sliding and moving and shifting and grooving we'll get the glue out or the double-sided sticky tape <laughs> or a bit of blue tack you know like a professional happy 
Well, needless to say, I did not get away with leaving everything in the room. It's all next door. I've had to carry it all into the jungle room or upstairs. <laughs> so, I mean, that was a bit ridiculous. But I am so excited about what it's going to look like. I just thought I'd try a little corner, do some measuring, see what it's like. And then it was like a deck of cards. It just went and I couldn't stop. I am thrilled. I've still got a long way to go yet, but oh, happy days, happiness, happiness, happy DIY. Okay, I would absolutely love to do this with a completely empty room. It would be a total joy because these carpet tiles are divine. Uh, the quality is just toasty. But I can't because I just simply can't move everything around the rooms and through the doors. I mean, that's huge. And there's two, there's three, there's actually three sofas in here and a fireplace. Um, but also there's no real funny stories. So I'm just going to crack on with it and then show you it at the end. All done. <laughs> See you at the end. Obviously, this is not stuck down. This is just a test piece. The gaps aren't going to stay. Um, but I did just find one little issue that I'll have to correct. Is that is slightly shorter by about five mil. So it was possibly um, cut short or the, the wall at the other side has just got a little bit of a recess. So I'll have to move this beast and put another one in there. And I'm going to run them straight as planks you'll see the lines but they're carpet tiles I had a look see what it would look like if I um you know step them so line plank line plank like that I can't I don't know what the word is but um I don't think it's a good idea because once we get to the other side if I get another little sort of, you know, discrepancy like that, you're going to have a gap like that. So, I'm going to try and avoid that. <laughs> should be good, should be good, should be good, I'm happy. That was a simple answer, it was just a slightly recessed underneath the skirting board. Um, so, I'll just scooch it forward and stick it down. Um, if you're worried about begonia, by the way, with all this chaos, don't. So yeah, as you can see, she's absolutely fine and in the right place. <laughs> but I mean, we should always in there with her. But um, what I'm going to do is stick them down with the eco stick and then um, very handily I thought I was buying some vacuum seal bags this size but what turned up <laughs> was this size <laughs> I'm sure I measured them twice before I bought them um, but I've I mean, I've tried filling it and then it's actually bigger than the than the things that I was trying to store away. <laughs> so what it is perfect for is putting a sofa on, putting a blue velvet sofa on, on top of glued carpet planks. Oh, yeah. Fabulous. I love it when life works like that. Oh, it's lovely. Look at my glamorous assistant holding corners down for me. He was born for this moment. Look at his face. <laughs> he says, I've been waiting for you. It's genuinely so nice. Honestly, it could be so much faster if I'd, you know, had the clear room. But I can't clear the room. Um, the only little blips that some people might sort of, you know, not be able to live with are because the floor's a bit uneven. I've evened out any sort of... um differences in height between the planks as best I can with some thin vinyl underneath to sort of smooth it out but I mean honestly there are wars on I absolutely love it I want to carpet plank everything
feel like I might be going back to Happy Valley and carpet planking up the walls. <laughs> oh, can you imagine? Oh, oh, how cosy, cosy. Not a single draft to be felt. Heaven. Nest. Yep, we're at that stage. It's late. I'm tired, but I'm not going to stop. Don't stop. Ever. Never stop. Sofas everywhere. Oh, Lord. She's still under the duvet. <laughs> I don't know how she manages it. Oh, dear. Right, okay. Uh. Wow. 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 So, top tip when you're laying them is work from the tile, not from the wall. Because if you lay all your tiles to each tile, you'll see that if you had gone to the wall, you'd be askew right in the middle of your room and it would be an absolute nightmare. You'd never be able to fix it. So, work to the tiles. Get the edges of the tiles. So you can see there's a gap. Make sure they're aligned, not to the wall. What you do at the end is you fill the gaps with pieces and then push your sofa against the wall and no one will know and you will forget. <laughs>